Hi strangers, it's Zep, uh, and today we're going to use the rest of the communion wafers that I used in this video in this video, linked in the card above. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of what else uh, better to do with the body of Christ than to make a hot slice of delicious za. Communion wafers and holy water. Uh, hit the title seat. Communion wafers, the godly snack. You eat them, it's the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, pizza, it's made of flour. We need flour. Luckily, this is unleavened flour and water for the most part. Last five, big J. So, we're going to need to dry out these and, and crush them into a flour like substance in order to facilitate the dry ingredient of our dough. So, I have this oven set to its lowest setting, and we're going to try to put this in without spilling any communion wafers, leave them in for half an hour, an hour, and uh, see if they dry out. Since they're mostly dry already and like just suck out all moisture in your mouth, as you can see in the videos in the card, um, I don't see this taking that long, so we'll just like cut to that. Wrong way, buddy. Okay, so we've had these in for about... 30, 45 minutes now. I think they're pretty bone dry to crush up into flour, so we're going to carefully try to move them out of the oven. And we're going to cancel this, stop baking that, and let's see how well they crush up. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I just realized I have my mask on and I'm going to have a blur it and post, but nice. Thank you. Alright, so we're going to have to crush up all of this. Uh, we'll cut two. Alright, so this is about uh, as pounded up into a fine of a grain. I think I can get it without a uh, mortar and pestle or a food processor. Which we don't have either because we're poor college kids. So here comes the fun part. We need to consecrate the salt and some of this lovely purified water we have um, uh, in order to make holy water because you need blessed water and consecrated salt to make that. And the benefit of having consecrated salt is that we can also use it to season our pizza and sauce, making it holy as well. Um, that's how it works. I'm sorry to tell you that. That's just facts of uh, Jesus. Thanks, Big J. So we're blessing the holy water, right? Well, well, we're consecrating the soul, exercising it. So we can then renew this holy water that I guess we already had that they blessed earlier in a later, an earlier experiment. But uh, uh, we kind of need the consecrated salt in order to season our holy food. So uh, let's just start with the prayer and we'll probably time lapse through this. Oh, cre oh water, creature of God, I exercise you to join it. Christ, thy Son, who lives and reigns in thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Alright, so everything's all blessed. We'll move to actually making the pizza dough. We can cut it. Alright, it's pizza making time. So first, we're going to take this one-fourth cup of water, holy water, make sure it's holy, going to sprinkle it across of the consecrated salt in it. We're going to very carefully dump it into our communion wafer flour. And just for good measure, add in some more salt. We're going to add a bit of yeast. We should probably have an exact amount on that. That's too much, but it doesn't matter. So we're going to start mixing it up. Hey, I just realized I need sugar for this. Can someone grab sugar? All right, so we're going to also need just a little bit of sugar make it brown in the oven at home oven temperatures. 
if this will brown at all. So this is a bit gelatinous for what I want because the grain is just so thick because we crushed it up. We did not like mill it. So I'm going to keep on adding water until it's finally dissolved. And then we're going to bless some flour uh, and mix it in until it works. That's cooking. That's science. Um, so we'll cut to that. As it turns out, um, if it's not finely milled, flour doesn't work as flour. So we're going to have to cut it with real flour, which uh, I hope, you know, like mixed in with the blood of Christ and stuff, or, or the body of Christ rather, should work out to make a pretty holy pizza. Maybe not entirely holy, but it's just like, I don't know. It's kind of like a Theseus's ship kind of thing. If you keep on adding to the body of Christ, is it still the body of Christ? Because we're kind of filming, like forming like a flesh mecca around the body of Christ. Kind of like they do an attack on Titan or whatever. I don't know, I haven't watched that show. I just know that like they form like a human meat suit around the main character. Uh, I know that's like his power. So I'm realizing that I probably should have uh, floured my fingies before doing this, but, you know, sacrifices get made in the heat of passion. Gookie. This is ookie gookie, kind of slimy. So we're going to need to dap in some olive oil, uh, because once again, I've forgotten to add an ingredient. So let's just take one of these, um, toss in a nice uh, nice slug. I think there's a seal thing on the... Oh, oh cracked open. Yeah, just, just a nice little glug of olive oil. Uh, I'll do the same to my hands. In order to facilitate no stickies. And continue kneading this until it's a fine, consistent texture. I hope this works. Alright, so we gotta mix this up. We gotta get this into a nice consistency before we start really making pizza and letting it rise, making our sauce and what have you. So, we're seeing how fast we can do this, patting it out, kind of flipping it, kind of punching it into itself. You know, the huge. Uh, let's get a little more olive oil on our hands, just to facilitate no stickies. All right, let's dance, baby. So what we want to do is until we can stretch it out and there will be a gossamer thin window that light will leak through. Right now, you can kind of tell it's pulling apart. We don't want that. We want the gluten to form it. The gluten will form like stretchy little particles in it, like chains in it. That'll make it stretchy. And that's what we want out of the pizza. It's real stretchiness. That'll help us stretch it out into a nice pizza shape and, you know, stretch it out, put it on the pizza stone, and uh, we'll be ready to go. If not, I do have a plan if that doesn't work and we cannot get it to that consistency, but we'll save that in our back pockets. See you when this pizza's ready. Come closer. Uh, I don't even get this. I don't want to. This doesn't sound okay. This sounds far too fleshy for any non-flesh food that I want to handle. I'll cut there. So we're going to literally coat this in some oil. Kind of form this into a shaggy little ball. I'm going to dip it in, spread it around, get it all nice and coated in oil coat the sides so it doesn't stick or anything. We want to let it rise for about mm, probably two hours. Actually, it might be better if we let it rise for a day. Oh, hey, um, it's been 18 hours. Uh, we had to let the dough rise. That's what was in my back pocket. You see, by letting the dough rise for like 18 hours, we've allowed it to um, hydrate all the flour to form the gluten. And by rising, it basically kneaded itself in a way, so we don't actually have to get it to that consistency that I was describing before, because it got itself to that consistency. 
Also, we were all far too tired to handle a 500 degree oven, and we would have burned ourselves. It was past midnight. So... Okay, so here's our solution for having a pizza stone. You see, the purpose of a pizza stone, or a pizza steel, which I prefer, is that it holds a lot of heat at once, so it can just shoot it up into the pizza to cook it really, really fast, which in most cases, if you like your pizza in a specific way, is what you want to do. Pizza stones are really expensive, and I don't know why, because they're stones. So we did this instead. These are some uh, quarry tiles unglazed from Menards. Uh, the guy who, who we bought them from was very confused when we told him it was for pizza, but it works. Uh, they, they can hold enough heat. They're basically kind of like a terracotta pot, which can hold up a lot of heat. But here's the problem. There's that like crease, there's that cross, and I'm really afraid that the pizza could get caught in that. As funny as it would be to have like a cross on the bottom of the pizza because love you, Big J. I also don't want the pizza to be stuck in there at 500 degrees and start on fire. So we're having a compromise. So I think we can put the pizza on a cookie sheet. If we put the cookie sheet on there, since it's made of metal, uh, it should transfer the heat well enough. So, thanks. I'm really hoping this works. And as an extra measure for keeping heat, uh, we're going to use one of these on top to form like a little convection oven. So it is extra hot. Unless if this oven has a convection uh, feature, in which case we won't do that. So, we'll see. Yeah, 500 is as high as this oven can go. Um, it should tell you what we're working with here. So we'll just start that and we'll leave it to preheat with the stones inside for one full hour. Now while we do that, we have other ingredients to prepare. We need to make a sauce, right? So we got these tomatoes. I don't know if they're good or not, but I have a contingency plan if they're not. So let's open them up. So we're just going to quick take these crushed tomatoes over to the sinky poo and drain out a little bit of that juice. All right, juice drained, just toss that. All right, sous chef John Braun, get on that Coca-Cola shirt and try and test out to see how these tomatoes taste already. You know, I hate tomatoes, but I'll do it anyway. Do you like no, I really don't. Take off that logo off your face. <laughs> just, just, just a pinky and that's a spicy meatball. What do you think it needs? All the things you're about to add to it. Okay, good. All right, so we'll toss in some like crushed it. red pepper flakes that we stole from the Godfather's downstairs. Probably like a glug of olive oil, maybe? That'll probably be good. And some pepper! Garlic, it's a pizza sauce, probably. You see, well, there's there's two sides of pizza sauces. You know, just kind of leaving the tomatoes and stuff and adding a bit of, a bit of pinch of salt. Uh, and then there's, you know, adding stuff. I'm personally a proponent of the adding stuff school because I can't find good tomatoes. Let's add a bit of the consecrated salt, oregano and basil, that's pretty pizza-y to me. Probably just due to the pizzas that I've had in the past and that I grew up with. It's that very pizza spice. Actually, it's an herb because it's a plant, right? I don't know. Words are just made up constructs. And let's add, throw in just a little bit of parmesan. Parmesan. Let's stir that all up. Let's I got you up. this goddamn whisk just for this purpose and you're using my okay. spatula. Fine, I'll use a whisk, I'll use the whisk. Oh, I'm mixing it with a whisk. You happy, you happy? I'm elated that you're actually using the tool that I provided for you. All right, Jingo Jongo. Yeah. Let's go back to you. Right, but let's get another taste. Yep, that's significantly better than the thing that I had earlier. Good enough to put on a pizza? Put in a pizza, but yes. All right. All right, so here's the thing. We need cheese. One of our cheeses, which is the main cheese, will be whole milk mozzarella. And we need it to be low moisture. If it were like that wet mozzarella, it would just leak through the pizza if we put it in the amounts that I want to put in. 
So we'll chop this up. Our other cheese that we're using is Swiss cheese, because it's the holiest cheese. And this is Jesus pizza after all. So we'll just peel here. This is a very sharp knife, it's pretty dangerous. See, you could have peeled them like it's on the directions of the... No, that's stupid. We'll chop this up first on this convenient, unused trash bag. Boy, you want kinda big chunks. Um, because if they're too small of chunks, then they'll uh, melt too fast and squeeze out all of the grease onto the pizza. It'll be gross and orange. Insert Donald Trump joke here. I have no idea how we're actually going to store these in a fridge because we don't have any other containers around us. So, because these need to be stored in the fridge because they go on the pizza cold when they go into the oven. So again, they don't squeeze out all of their gross orange gook. Because that's disgusting. We don't want that on our pizza. Jesus would not be happy. Now, for the Swiss, I'm not sure how much Swiss we actually want to use. Um, I prefer not a lot, because I'm not sure if it like tastes good. So we're just gonna slice off a little bit and toss it in. I'm not sure how it'll melt, I'm not sure how it'll brown. This is kind of a reckless decision as far as pizza making goes, but We'll take what we can get. All right, so we've had that oven heating up for one full hour at 500 degrees. So it should have cooked those stones a good amount. We did not form the convection oven because I want the least amount of cleanup as possible. So our dough has risen a good amount over those, uh, I probably 20 hours. Well, a little corn, cornamilla onto our pizza tray and overturn this dough onto it. Oh yeah, baby, look at that craggy surface. Yeah, baby, that's going to absorb the sauce and oil really, really well. Just put a little bit of oil on it, just for that flavor, just so it fries a little bit, just fries All right, so bit. we need to get some of that sauce onto this pizza. We'll do that through these measuring cups, probably. Um. Let's take a little scoopy doopy. Scoopy, scoopy, scoopy manoopy. Y'all play bug snacks? Uh, let's sprinkle on just a little bit of Parmesan cheese in between the cheese and the sauce, just to give a nice like separation layer. And also I just like this crappy dry Parmesan that you would also get in like a can. So we're gonna just start placing this cheese around. We'll start with the outside, get a nice, and McCheesy. Do, do, do. All right. So I'm going to grab these mitts. Or a bit. Uh oh. I'm going to be incredibly careful. I'm going to grab it. Ooh, that's very hot. Kind of well. Oh yeah, it's already, it, it started to fry as soon as it touched, so hopefully this doesn't take that long. All right, here comes the really dangerous part. So we're going to grab it. Oh, that the gloves hold. Slide it off. That looks like a pizza pizza. Check the underside of that pizza and no browning at all. That's bad. That's a bad thing. Probably because we didn't put it directly on those stones. And uh, I forgot to add in more sugar uh, when we were mixing this up and trying to make a homunculus uh, out of this. So at least we did not get any grease leaking out, which is good. For a first attempt shot at making this pizza, not that bad, I think. Hi, I'm behind the camera because I'm not experimenting on myself. All right, boys, let's try some pizza. I got it. Are you ready? Oh, it's hot. Yes. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, how is it, boys? Just like the Holy Spirit. Mm. God himself gave us this pizza. Yeah. Yes. Holy water, consecrated salt, communion wafers to make this pizza. It definitely does not taste like normal pizza though. There's something definitely different about it. Don't ever let anybody tell you you can't be anything you want because this turned into this. Hey, Day, how's the za? Pretty damn good. Happy. <laughs>